as students in college, it's very difficult because we do a lot of research and in that time can be very time consuming. So today I'd like to introduce you into I'd like to introduce you to a new platform called Zotero, your personal research assistant. Zotero is a very useful research assistant software that helps you select, organize research, and cite your sources you use on the projects that you do in college. As collegian students, we have to ensure that our work is submitted with valid sources, and those sources need to be cited in order to be able to use them in our work. Zotero simplifies this in three different ways. It allows you to collect your sources that you cite from the web with a simple click of a button of an extension button. Along with this, you can organize your citations into different libraries to better be able to access them for different courses throughout your college years. It also allows you to cite them in the styles that you choose to. In other words, you can cite an MLA format or you could cite an APA 7. Another way this software is very, very resourceful is it allows you to synchronize your data across devices. If, say, you reference some work on your Windows computer and wanted to be able to use that software on your Mac laptop or your Macintosh laptop, all you would have to do is sign into your account and then you'd be able to access all of those sources that you had before. Now, moving on to installation. It's very, very simple to install Zotero. In fact, if you have Mac or Windows, it's as simple as running the installation file that you download from the download page. So for instance, say you had Windows, you would come down here to down to uh, download and you come down to here, you would find your installation type, you download the file, click on the file, and it runs a setup wizard. For Linux, however, it's a bit more complex. First, you would download the tarball, extract the contacts from the tarball, move the extracted contents to directory, a uh, third-party directory like opt Zotero, run the set launcher icon script from the terminal to update the desktop files location, but we're going to use the simpler route. And for Debian, Ubuntu-based distri distributions, that most people use for Linux. There is a longtime community member that maintains Zotero Deb, which is a lightweight wrapper for the official tarball that uses APT for installations and updates, automatic updates. If we go to this GitHub page, it shows us Emilio Haynes public repository for this project. And to install Zotero, we simply run these three commands. Hold the package. Repository. We run update. Then we simply install Zotero using APT package manager. Using APT package manager, which is installed by default into many of uh, into all Debian and Ubuntu based distributions. While that waits, 
or go over the process for installing the extension that is required for Zotero to work. To install this extension, you simply go down to the download page where it says install connector. It says the Zotero connector. Save from your browser with a single click. You have the Chrome connector, the Edge connector. It even works with Safari on your iOS mobile platform. To install the Firefox connector, we click the link and it adds it to our browser. It will ask us to allow the website to install the add-on and we want to trust this organization as they handle your data with care and they do not sell your information. They do not have no financial interest in your data at all. You can trust them to be able to access your data for all websites, access browser tabs, and access browser activity during navigation. This simplifies the process of doing research on the web and being able to save that to a platform from which you can easily access. Now that we have Zotero installed to our system, we can easily run that from our applications. It is now in my office locations. I'll drag it up here for easy access and we'll open it and get started. Now, when you first start up Zotero, it may ask you to install a plugin for whichever browser you intend on using it with. And it also will ask you to install a connector, but we just did that. So we'll move on to that next. First, we're gonna we're gonna follow the instructions on the application. We don't want to install the extension for our for our word processor. However, that is a very integrated feature that you can also use with Zotero in connecting it to whichever word processor you use, whether it is you use LibreOffice, Word, or whichever one that Mac OS uses. Now, if we take a look here at the software, it shows us it shows us how this would work. We have five uh, we have four different categories in the sub in the first initial local library. We'll make sure that the extension is turned on. Doesn't look like it added the extension. Downloads. Okay, so I guess it did not install that extension. Hmm. There. Now it is activated and we can demonstrate how this works. So it's like I said, there are libraries that you get and you are able to use for Zotero. You can create a collection of your own. So just for example today, I'll make one for speech class. So now we have a folder set up for speech class. So in order to be able to demonstrate how useful this is, we will find a docu documentation Ten tips 
for improving, improving your public speaking skills by Marjorie North. The three minute read, pretty, a pretty, pretty helpful little page that goes over some very important facts about public speaking which would be very, very useful to use in any writing documentation you may have to use, that you may have to submit to school. So in order to use this software, all we have to do is run this extension. It's going to give us a warning first. We've installed the Zotero connector. The Zotero connector enables you to save items to Zotero from your browser in a single click. If you have not downloaded it, if you have not if you haven't yet, download the Zotero application for the best experience. We already did that, and it was very, very easy. We had the help of Amelia Haynes to do that. So we'll run it again, and now we can clearly see, if I expand on this, that it has saved it to my local library. Now, if I want to make a citation with this, it's as simple as clicking on here, or if I want to use this as reference in my paper, it's as simple as clicking here, Control Shift C, opening up my paper that I would like to write. We'll just use my text editor for example, and we'll paste it in here. And now, as you can clearly see, it has saved that web page as a reference. Now, let's say we found something in this article that was really helpful and we want to actually use those words for word. So we can open this snapshot in a new tab. Now we have access to the actual website that we saved in our Zotero application. This is one of the benefits of using Zotero. Because from here, one thing we can do is add a note. We'll say we want to add a note here. Say we like this. It's okay to be normal, ner to be nervous. Keep practicing. So here's a note we left on this. Or let's say we want to make a word for word citation. This sentence here. Copy this. Pull up here. We can go to notes. All notes as standalone note paste. And there you have it. It has generated that as a citation in the format of what Zotero sets the citation format to by default. Now, if you wanted to change that, you could modify that within the settings. However, this is the general idea of how resourceful Zotero can be for you when you are writing a paper. You can use this for any website that you browse to on the web. And it simplifies the process across different platforms. So if I would like to say for instance, access all of my sources from the last time that I was on Zotero and logged into my account. I would click the synchronize button up here in the right hand corner and it allows me to edit my synchronization preferences, which would mean that I would be able to log into my account. So if I log into my account,
it now has my account linked to the software. And from here, I can also edit the different styles I'm able to cite in with the style editor. Right now, it's set up to cite in, I believe. All these different formats. And so now that it's linked to my account, if I go back and press the synchronize button, it will be as simple as that to be able to load in all of my previous citations that I have collected. And as you can clearly see, I have folders galore, cyber ethics and policy, meteorology, sports related to web browsing, which it's not showing those yet, it's taking a bit to get to see. So for instance, right here, I could open this up in a tab and it would tell me a thing or two about One, two, three. Now I have all this information. It tells me about what this is, vulnerabilities that are related to it, so on and so forth. And if I need to write about this, I have quick and easy access to that. Not to mention Creative Mind citations, which are related to all different sorts of fun topics. I have a lot of citations collected. This is just the best referencing software that I've ever used in my entire life and it has been one of the most beneficial resources I've ever used in class because it always is there to be able to help me write papers and writing papers and doing projects and making speeches are the most important things that require practice and they require help from others so being able to cite the help that you get and reference that work and having a manager to be able to do that is one of the most helpful things to have for, for school thank you